Get ready to actually learn real game development. Cody's Lab is not another video series. It is an interactive system that forces you to learn. Let's get started. First, let me show you the game. This is a game that we, we will be creating in the Space Shooter course. So how do we install this and learn, start learning the tutorial? First you need to go to the Cody's Lab website and you can scroll down to the download link that will take you to the Unity Asset Store. Once you're there you can click open in Unity and launch application. This will open the Unity new project window where you can click new project and go ahead and give your project a name. Cody's Lab Space Shooter will work and put that where you want it on your computer. Once you create the project, it will take you to the U Unity Asset Store and load Cody's Lab. Depending on the internet connection, it might take a second. And you'll need to click the download button and then you can click import. Importing the, the project will take about 30 seconds because it has to compile all of the content in Unity. Once this finishes, you can close the asset store. And then in Unity, make sure to, to open the main scene. You should see the black background and go to the game preview and ensure that you click Maximize on Play and click Play. This will start Cody's Lab. Uh, it starts off by showing you the intro video to Digital Gaming Institute. We are the producers of Cody's Lab and all the courses. On your first play it will indicate that you need to click on the Getting Started video which is the video you're currently watching this button will take you to the website. Notice that the green arrow will always help you know what you should do. So pay attention if you see a green arrow. That is probably what you need to click next. This goes to the website and this is the video that you can watch to see the intro video. So go back to Unity. When you go back to Unity you also see that there's a notification and you can open that and it will tell you about Cody's Lab and allow you to vote on the game that you would like to see next. What type of game would you like to learn how to make? I'm going to go ahead and click 2D Platformer and send feedback at the bottom. Then you can close that window. Let's go to the training room and we will get started with learning. Lesson 1 is set up the main scene. In the step, first step we will create the main scene and the preview is blank because it's just an empty scene. All you need to do is hit File and New Scene. That's the first step. Next we will add the background to the main scene. In each of the scene simulator steps we're using prefabs to make it simple for the beginner so you need to find the prefabs folder and drag the background to the game preview. Next we'll add the ship, which is again a prefab. We'll go player, add a drag player to the game preview, and you can see the background with the ship. The first lesson is a just setting up the scene. Now when you finish the lesson you'll see that you have a notification where you can rate the lesson based on its difficulty and how well you learned and provide any feedback that we need uh, that we can help you uh, develop better courses or maybe correct any mistakes. Next you will create a, a new script called move player on the player and this is uh, where we will start coding after we create the new script on the player object. We select the player object and add the new script giving it the name move player and we'll click create and add. Now in these steps, these are this is where we will start learning 
what code will actually control our game objects. In the preview window, this preview icon, you can see the ship moving to the right. This text at the bottom will indicate what you should see. Now our player is flying to the right. Notice that immediately the player flies off the screen to the right. This is what our code for this step will accomplish. Let's go ahead and construct the code. Over here on the left side are the instructions. All the instructions that you need to understand what you're going to type. In the middle you have a pop-up which tells you the objective or, or tells you what to do next. In this step we need to uh, fulfill the objective which is translate the player to the right. If we read all of the instructions you will understand what you need to do and here you'll see the code, the words that you need to include in your code in order to accomplish your objective. If this typing is too slow you can make it faster or slow it down with the con speed controls on the right. After you read this, then you can go ahead and type in the code that will accomplish the objective. If you make a mistake, the pop-up will indicate what you, what you typed wrong and indicate what you need to type. So I need to type transform. This pop down this uh, autocomplete window on the bottom will help you as you type it will give you choices you can either click on them or use your arrow to navigate to complete a word you can hit the tab key and that will take you to the next step okay so we constructed the code if you want to repeat that, you can use the previous button and or you can click on the task to complete it again. So we'll go to the next task, which is understand the code. From reading the explanations in the first step, now we have some fill-in-the-blank questions that will help us to review what the code is doing. The transform holds the values for the game object's position, rotation, and scale. So when I know the answer, I hit transform. A simple way to move a game object is by calling the blank method of the blank. That's the translate method of the transform. Tr translate means to move something in a certain direction and distance. A blank is a value type that contains three coordinates. That's a vector 3. The vector 3 type contains values for six primary directions, which are right and left, up and down, and forward and back. In order to move our object, we can call the translate method of the transform component and make it go to the right. So you just click on the answers from the code below. The next step is to identify mistakes. The code will be me uh, messed up, and you need to identify what has changed since you typed it the first time. If you look in here, you can see that Vector three uh, dot right is missing, so we'll click on those parts and correct them. Finally, we can preview the results of our code, what it will actually do in a game. This is a live preview running, and we can hit the restart step to see it from the beginning. We can also control the the experimental values, the code values and this will change the code and change how the game runs. This is all running live. So if I type vector3.left down here instead, if I choose vector3.left, it will change vector3.left in our code and change what the, co what the game does. Click restart step to see it again. If I go forward, you see that result. If I go back, or if I hit zero, so these, this will show you exactly how the code changes the game. That's pretty cool. Click done when you understand how the code affects the game and you're ready to go to the next line of code. You continue through this process as you go through the entire lesson and you have the chance to review and understand all the code that you are learning and how that might affect uh, use in a real game. Now you can go to change the lesson. 
This is a list of all the lesson steps and you can change the lesson. You can navigate to any lesson and see all of the steps that you need to accomplish. If you want to skip ahead you can but I would advise against that. Make sure to follow the order of the lesson so that you can understand everything. Click on any task and you will go directly to that. You can go back and review as you go. If you want to play the game you can click on the preview game button and you can change you can change to different parts of the game or you can change to the start of the course the end of the course or you can preview what game will be produced in the future and play it using your keyboard arrow keys and space or WSAD controls with the spacebar That is the end of the preview, and let me show you one more thing that you can do. If you ever have a problem, you don't know what you, you do, you've made a mistake, remember that if you just try something, you'll probably be told what you need to do. And if you do have a problem, you can always click the notification and provide problem feedback. Maybe you can tell us that there's a typo or you have some other problem. It's a typo in the first step. Thank you. That feedback will help us. We are indie developers and trying to, to create courses for other indie developers and, and beginners. And we will also be producing intermediate level courses very soon. Keep an eye on our website to see what we will be producing in the future.